What's going on everybody, LK here, and today, a little bit more Guilty Gear, I wanted to talk a little bit about not just Zato, but how to think about fighting characters with an extra resource. So, when the game came out, you know, we had a bunch of the bruisers, so we had like Soul, Mei, Nago, you know them, you love them. These are the characters that punch you, or use their giant anchor, they have advantage, and then when you get scared, they grab you. Now we have three DLC characters, but when the game came out, we had quite a few of these. When you really look at the character select screen, how many characters use strike throw as like their main way of hitting you, there's quite a few of them. While there were characters who did make you somewhat alter your game plan, it wasn't as extreme as previous games just because characters lost tools or they reworked certain things. So here for me, I think Zato, when the game came out, was probably the standout one. Uh, now there's more characters like Gold Lewis to an extent, Happy Chaos of course, Jacko, and then there's some characters who weren't as good when the game came out that are stronger now that now you need to really change your game plan when you play against them. I think Eno is a really good standout one. These characters present pretty unique challenges in that since they have a resource, the game changes based on how much resource they have left and whether or not they're using it as opposed to standard characters like, let's say, Soul. Soul is pretty straightforward, right? So we know he has good buttons. We know what has advantage and what's not. You know to stay outside of ranges or be inside of ranges. And then when he's doing this, he's winning. And when you're doing whatever your character is good at doing, you're winning. So let's use Zato to learn how to think about these more complex characters who rely on a special resource or a special thing. So the place we start is, do they have the resource at the beginning of the game? Zato does, but for example, Gold Lewis, who has the security meter, he does not have that. This is going to affect how we're going to think about them immediately because Zato has the ability to use summons at the start of the round if necessary. We look at the character without whatever thing they need. So in this case, Eddie first. So. Zato, not that fast. He's got some unique movement. He's got pretty big pokes, but if some of them whiff, he has a good amount of recovery. And then we look at the resource in general. So he has the Eddie meter. It lets him summon Eddie. He can summon it with P. K, this is the drills. S is leap. And then H, of course, is oppose. And each of these use different amounts of meters. So the Eddie punch doesn't use a lot. It's the second one that uses more meter. And then we have the drills which uses gauge for each drill that appears. And then we have no Nobiru, which just uses a big old chunk. And then we have a pose, which uses basically all of it if you let it run. So each of these moves then that we look at, what do they straight up do? Eddie P is a punch that controls space really fast, right? The drills are slower, but they control a bunch of space on the ground. They have a lot of advantage. The leap is clearly an anti-air. He goes up and down. And then this protects space. And we know that Zato can work together with his summon to control space, do things for full screen, things like that. So the implications there is that when you have a fast character like Milia, she can maneuver around what Zato does. Not super easy, but she doesn't have to engage when she doesn't want to. Where on the other hand, a character that can't move around very quickly, like Nago to Yuki, he is going to have problems maneuvering around and he will have to address all of Zato's move in a more direct fashion. Why is that direct? I mean, he has to just fight it head on. He can't pick, oh, I'm not going to do anything because he can't move out of the way. Carefully consider how much your character has to deal with the resource. And in Zato's case, it's going to be the summon and see if you can pick maybe run away or wait it out at times. So if we have Zato with the resource available and then Zato with the resource out, then the last one we need is Zato without the resource. So that's this red meter filling up. So this is what happens when you kill Eddie. So now he's not gonna have access to any of his Eddie summons. So this is a time where we can try to pressure him, push him into the corner or force him to do things because he loses all of his implicit space control with Eddie punch or the anti-air nobiru or protecting himself with a pose. You can apply this top-down view of characters or resources to any one of them in the game. So Nago is a strike throw character, but he also does heavily rely on a resource. It's his blood meter. So as I mentioned before, he's not very mobile, but he has special moves that make him explosive, that make him very mobile. So one of the main ones would be Beyblade, 14 frames, travels metaphor, zero on block, costs 90 blood. So not a whole gauge, but almost an entire one. 
or another one would be the clone so that's a projectile goes full screen also costs 90 blood so when you start the round he has access to his entire blood gauge so you have to be careful of these moves but if he uses a couple so now he's at two and a half so once this meter fills up you know that he's going to go into blood rage so you and the nago both know you don't want to go into blood rage for fun if you want to go into blood rage you want to have like a setup for it or a reason for it maybe aiming for a comeback or something so here is going to be the time where they go into footsie mode and you should know that his normals change depending on the level so here you're going to be playing around the normals until he goes back down and has enough resource to kind of safely sneak in another either instant approach or something to kill your projectiles or things like that it's also going to affect your decision making during his pressure as well because when he has no blood like this he can very liberally do this style of pressure special move into special move into special move so in this case if he was to do another special move and notice the blood gauge has to go up to the amount that you use if he did that he would have to go for the bite here if he didn't want to pop and potentially lose the game so keep this in mind and definitely try to take a little bit more time to dig into the characters of resources because a lot of the strategy is not going to be just about moves versus moves it's also going to be about how much resource do they have how much more are they going to push do they want to try to get the resource back or not how much threat can they imply with the amount of resource they have left things like that you need to really make sure not that you're just looking at it but you really understand the gauge or understand the resource and how your opponent uses it as usual if you guys have any questions or comments definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below like and subscribe if you guys feel like it and i'll see you all next time peace out